say. Should we get going? Here's an idea I've got for you. Why don't you just hit the live button and see what happens? What do you say, Will? What do you say, old pal, old bud? You sound like a con man. <laughs> he keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm doing that on beat for you. I was doing that on beat for you. Mo, I was doing that on beat for you. Mm -hmm. We got big problems today. What's that? Big show, big problems. Big show and big problems? Big show, big problems. Unrelated, related. <laughs> Will says, hey, this story's related to that other story. I said, is it the same story? He said, no, related. Yeah, he did say that. And he told me to shut the hell up. <laughs> I, I'm not he said, well, that's a bit aggressive, sir. Yeah. He said, not aggressive enough, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it was a stare down. Still recovering. Yeah. It's very I intense. I see. It's terrifying. I'm barely here right now. He sent laser beams through my skull. Right, through his eyes. They came out the back of my head. There's no more loot. There were brain particles on the <laughs> ground. I had to place them back in. I scrambled. Mm -hmm. Still recovering. <laughs> Yo, can you uh, make the chat just a little bit bigger, please? If yeah, you don't very mind. tiny. Only if you don't mind, though. Okay. Only if you don't mind, because I know you're a tight ship around here. And uh, something like that would never... Uh, I would never get past you, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Uh, let me tell you about the problems of today here on CNN Ultra. Right. Tell you about some of the problems here today. Breaking news. There are problems in the world. Tonight at 6, there are problems in the world. Good luck to all of you. We'll see you again next week. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Good luck with all those problems. See you again next week on Problem Talk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I didn't bring the Wolverine today. Oh, this is the problem? That's here? a big problem. <laughs> okay. I didn't bring the Wolverine oh, today, you. which oh, is a you. shame because Wolverine was hungry mm -hmm. and he was ready for 20 nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't bring... <laughs> Wolverine's ready for 20 nuggets. How quickly it's my fault now, eh? <laughs> uh, he was ready for 20 nuggets. Yeah. Shout out Austin's Tech. Shout out Logan. Shout out everybody. It's here right now. Um, right. Uh, my daughter would not give up the Wolverine today. <clears throat> she kept pressing the buttons. He kept going. Whooshing, whooshing, whooshing. And I was like, I am not about to wrestle you for that because no. I'm going to lose that match. I'm not going to win that match. Yeah. And so I left that Wolverine at home. I'm going to have to try to sneak it away at a more opportune moment. Obviously. When it is not at, uh, the center of attention. Right. So maybe next time that Wolverine wakes me up at night, I'm going to I'm going to put hide it. I'm going to put that straight in the car. Right. Mm -hmm. Say let me let me tell you, you let me tell you where you're going, mm -hmm. Mr. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah. Mr. X-Man, let me tell you where you're going now. Going in the back seat. Shout out Power Bit. <clears throat> but I couldn't wrangle it. Now you, on the other hand, right? No. You, on the other hand, yeah. You I had did. your mission, and I you, did. you didn't. You weren't. You weren't having to wrangle a Wolverine away from a three-year-old. No. I think all you had to do was roll through a little drive-through. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I believe that's all you had to do. Yes. Now, but I now do tell have, me what got in your way, I sir. Legit, I legit, I can see the chat is real upset. Yeah. They're like, no, sh no nuggets, no show. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't even know. You call it, I mean, pack it in. <laughs> call it a day, no nugget, no show. Wow. No, no. Let's keep As far doing as this. I can tell. But I couldn't um, yeah. go because I left my wallet at home. And on top of that, oh, no. Kirk's not here. So I was like, Lou's going to make me eat all the 20 nuggets if Kirk's not here. So I'm going to pass on that. Dog the ate the homework. Dog <laughs> ate the homework. Uh, I don't know if you heard of, uh, a little thing. I don't know if you heard of a little sponsor of the show here by the name of DoorDash. You ever oh, heard, yeah. You ever heard of DoorDash? You know what they do? Uh, they dash they, food to your door. They go to McDonald's so you don't have to. Right. 
And so you don't need a wallet because it's already attached to your door dash. Say goodbye to wallets. You'll never need another one ever again. Shout out Logan. Logan. Wolverine. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. The origin. Yeah. <laughs> I say we get those nuggets I over here, Mo, and I say you just put it to an end. I say you put it to bed right now. Uh, I say you I got put an, an end to the story. I got an idea. We'll do a Friday show. No, look at this guy. A Friday Take another fun day. show. Unbelievable, this guy over and here. And we'll have Crick on the show. Yeah, but you you don't know about Crick. You don't know what's oh, going on. I think he's the he real could, contender he, he, here. He could be uh, he could be in a, hanging out on a parachute right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and Will knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Will. Does. Will knows what I. He could be hanging off a carabiner right now. Will knows what I'm talking about. Very adventurous. You like might her. not and know yeah. what I'm talking. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Will's a vet here. He might be He might be on a pontoon boat, far as I can tell. <laughs> far as I know. Or he might be portaging. And you know about that as well, Mo. Yeah, he does. He does love to go portaging. So who knows? We can't uh, speculate. We can only speak for ourselves here. There's nothing between you and these nuggets. Right, right. You can't, you can't. Eh. Well, he could be snorkeling. I, I he could really, be snorkeling right could now. Be, he could be, but. Shout out, Logan. He is scheduled to come in tomorrow, so <laughs> I think yeah. it's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> what you mean scheduled? Who's got a schedule around here? I do. Will doesn't. No, he does. He just doesn't tell you about it. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah. Uh, uh. It's a real, uh, we're in, we're in a pretty dire situation over here with this show. This, <laughs> oh show, this show is on the fritz right now. No, no, I'll make oh, it up yeah. tomorrow. Uh, and somebody else will be eating the nuggets. I don't know. I don't know about all that. Apple is planning a 15-inch MacBook Air for 2023 and a new 12-inch laptop. They don't have it because they don't have enough laptops for you. <laughs> right. 47 different phones and 52 options for laptops, iPads, and a billion ways to get things done. Because mm. it's the only way we get things done in 2022. And uh, we're, I don't feel, I don't know that we're lacking options, but they're selling these things. Yeah. People like them. They might love them. Uh, notice in the chat has trust issues now because of the nugget situation. Oh, no. Can't even move past it. You're doing psychological damage to people at this point. Now, right. I hope you understand the magnitude of the situation. Will wants to say something. Go ahead, Will. We're both on the hook here. Oh. Like you guys. You two. <laughs> it's not oh. just Mo. You say we're both. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. That implies you yourself. What are you on the I guess for? we are all. Oh, I have trust issues now. <laughs> Bronco Model 3. Oh, yeah. Bronco. He brought the Bronco <laughs> into the mix. Already, <laughs> forty-five seconds into we the show. We haven't started the show. <laughs> forty-five seconds into the show, he brought it in already. Yeah, we owe mm. the community. Mm. We do. We do. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't care. Yeah, give me no more choice. Why not? Right now, I think that the the new air they just announced is going to be a great choice for the vast majority of people. But if you want a bigger screen, but you want thin and light, and you don't need this extraordinary, extraordinary. If you don't need that extraordinary power associated with the pro model chips that Apple's putting out, then, but you just want a bigger screen, I can think of people that that would be perfect for. I can imagine them. Would it have to get <clears throat> a little thicker because of like bigger screen, bigger battery? I don't know if it does or not. These things are, are fairly power efficient at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Plus, they can they can make these batteries thin. It'll it'll just the, right. it'll it'll extend larger because of the footprint without necessarily needing to be fatter. I see. Right. Talking about surface area here. Shout out later verse. Uh, Man, I'm a big fan of the matching colored. Game. You know, something happened with this midnight thing, by the way, where somebody zoomed right in on okay. one of the ports, and they saw that the color was already chipping off. Uh oh. <gasps> no, go ahead, Mo. Oh my god, that's horrible. Go ahead. That's the midnight one that I was looking for, looking forward to. 
However, Marquez was uh, uh, reviewing it's like hands on whatever, and he was saying that uh, it's a fingerprint magnet, mm -hmm. the uh, matte black one. Yeah. Or midnight, whatever they're calling it. Uh, and what if it's a chip magnet as well? Well, that's a huge problem. What if it's a scratch magnet as well? No, this none of this is any good. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, it's no good. You're out? You just uh, switched the color? No, I don't know if I'm out. This is just a rumor, right? I still really like no, the no. black. No, no, it's not a rumor. There's evidence. This is for sure happened? Uh, it, 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 by the way, Apple has done That's, these kind of colors before. And maybe the not, not the most durable. I don't know. I said durable. Really? I just said the first part of it. Right. <laughs> Right, you just stopped. <laughs> I had other words to get to. <laughs> okay, well, I really hope this is not the case. Yeah. Do you think they would uh, replace it if it did? I mean, at a certain point, probably, if it became a big enough issue. Right, okay. Many people affected and so forth. But it's just cool and new, so I got to give it a crack. No, me too. Yeah. I got to give it a one-two. Mm -hmm. I got to give it a left-right. I got to give it an up-down. So... Uh, but anyway, maybe a 15-inch is going to be a better deal for some people. Thin and light, stupid thin, uh, however, bigger screen. And then this 12-inch is like the ultra-portable masterpiece. They go ahead and make that. Uh, maybe they get it down to 2 pounds. I don't know. They're at, what, 2.7 right now on the 13.6 or whatever that yeah. new thing is. Measuring... Away from the notch. Stay away from that notch. The yeah. measurements are going, dee, 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 dee. whoa, let's go this notch. way. Dodge the notch on the. <laughs> it's a, it's a ruler, but it has a, just a, has little, a notch uh, on it. Yeah. Like a roundabout. It might. Yeah. Uh, Apple's doing well. Look at the little chart. Look at the little graph. 9% uh, of the market. PC push. Dell's up there in there. HP, Lenovo, and others. Hmm. Uh, now you gotta remember, Apple wow. Apple doesn't sell like a super cheap com personal computer, mm -hmm. whereas other brands do. Apple, right. you want to play ball, you want to come to the, to Apple's party, you pay. Hmm. You see, you pay. You see, you right. buy. You break, you buy. I'm really surprised how Apple's only nine percent. It's under ten percent. No, 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 no. Mm. It's good. Do you think it's because like HP makes deals with the um, like large businesses and Dell makes deals with large businesses? It's cost, dude. It's cost. It's just straight up just cost. You not every not a, not everybody business institution so forth school education not everybody's gonna be buying a thousand dollar laptop for mm -hmm. for everything. In a lot of cases, of you don't not. you don't need it. Yeah. It's a it's a luxury. Some might say. Um, I know for you, you you don't care, but. <laughs> You have how many of these things and no. ultra this and that and yeah. my name is Mo and this and that. <laughs> my name is Mo, Mo Ultra. Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't need to tell you, but uh, it's a big world out there, Mo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people doing a lot of things. No, this is very interesting. I lot, didn't know. A lot of people doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I got to let you know. And only 9% on a Mac. Well, you're in a good mood uh, what's today. What's happening? You're in a good mood today. You're in a good mood today. You're in a great... I never saw you smile this much at this point in the show. Usually this point in the show, you're just clickety-clacking. Well, it's a nervous oh. kind of laugh. This is you. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's a kind nervous laugh, uh, he says. Well, you don't want to know something. Well, you want to know. Yeah. But gonna, hey, you know. Let I me give you. It. Let me give you all you know, types of comfort. Let me give you all types of okay. com comfort yeah. right now. You said to me moments ago... That you don't know what I'm doing. Well, here's some comfort for you. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that coming, Will? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, who really knows? Yeah. In life, you know? Easy, Will. <laughs> Getting carried away over there. Will's like, yeah, let's uh, lean into this. He goes, uh, zooms all the way out. And the people are like, geez, Will. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit serious. Um, Who really knows in life? Yeah. 15-inch model. That's what we know. Apple's going to make one. 2023, so they say. Well, German says it. Bloomberg says it. I don't even know if it's German. Shout out, Daniel. Shout out, Brevin. 
uh, Brevin says, you tell me to buy, I buy. You tell me to sell, I sell. Right. You tell me to go ahead, I go ahead. You show me enough times, I also buy. I see it, I buy it. <laughs> A nice little rhyme. Well, this, I mean, obviously this individual has invested the correct amount of time in the later education system. <laughs> education. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 12-inch uh, MacBook hasn't been around for a while, but I was a little bit of a fan of the previous version, which was super-duper portable. It was underpowered, however. I tried to do stuff on it. I tried to make a beat here and there on, okay. that, on that thing when it existed. Look how the keyboard extends right to the edges, but it was yeah. underpowered compared to the other options. Uh-huh. Uh, it had a tiny little power brick as well. It's about time they come back to it now that they've made so much progress as far as their own chips are concerned, they can figure this one out. Mm -hmm. Tremendous battery life on the tray table. You're on the airplane. Mm -hmm. You're on the airplane. You know where you're going? No. What do you mean? On the oh. airplane. Yeah, I'm on the airplane. Do you know where you're going? No, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know where I'm going. You put me on a plane. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to board an airplane, you best know where you're going. Yes, <laughs> but I'm not bored. I'm so confused here. <laughs> my advice to you is don't get on an airplane if you don't know where you're going. Okay. That's my advice to everybody. <laughs> what? <is going> on? <laughs> that was like sincere advice after the most confusing interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, okay. Next up. We had these uh, pictures. We had these pictures posted from Sawyer Merritt. He has uh, the stock going up line in his bio, like, or actually right in his name, as well as the rocket, rocket. ship. So he's your type. To the moon. Well, like when you're on the dating apps, that's your type. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Woo. you are in the mood today <laughs> will was right <laughs> he was nervous earlier apparently Woo. for a good reason <laughs> who was nervous will. no he's not nervous don't let him convince you of that uh shout out chris so he posts these photos i guess they haven't been seen before uh they were on a facebook group and it's up close and personal with the cyber truck Hmm. And, uh... <sighs> what? It sounds negative. It doesn't have to be negative. Okay. These are photos of a, like, a closer to production model. And you can start to envision this possibly, I guess, being on the street. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to look different than, for me, quite a bit different than what was shown off originally. And I get it. I, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but I it's not looking better. It's looking worse. And there's something about... Go ahead, Will. Go ahead. Are you going to tell me it's looking better or worse? Um, it's definitely looking worse. It's something about taking this really ambitious design and then having to meet the criteria of highway traffic and safety. Mm -hmm. And once you yeah. put the mirrors and mm -hmm. the wipers and the wheels, the wheels and tires don't seem right. And the fenders around them, there's it, it, everything seems glued on. It all seems, it seems like my art project mm. when I'm 12 and it, this, on the other hand, looks science fiction. This looks really cool, but yeah, you're right. The real image, the real life. That's stuff. what I ordered, Mo. Mm -hmm. When I gave them 500 bucks or whatever it was, now this looks like a Ford F-150 with a body kit. Mm. It's starting to look like that. And then if you look even more closely, you can see, like, I don't know if people already... If consumers are ready for the, this jagged stainless steel, because when you look at it up close, and I know even a, a guy like Will, right? Mm -hmm. Guy like Will, 
He's going to obsess over this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. He's going to spend a fortune on this, and then he's going to go look at all the gaps. And oh, he's gonna, yeah, I'm buying this? No, I'm just saying a guy like you, uh, <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a certain type of taste. Okay, sure. Like, you go and you buy, like, a fine cheese or something like that. Mm. And, and it costs a ton of money, and then you chase it down a hill. Chase it? <laughs> the great there annual cheese roll? Mm -hmm. There you go, Will. Yeah. Uh, shout out patches. So you start to look at it up close. You see the discrepancy in the stainless steel, which doesn't show up in the original photos. Obviously, Photoshop. These, this is like more regal life of what it's going to be like to live with it. And we knew it. We knew it. I got an order. I got an order. Don't worry. I'll boot around. I'll boot around town. You, but you see everything. It's so reflective. Like you see all the warping in the body panels down the side. Yeah. <laughs> all the smudges. Go to the one that shows the hood. The pit photo that shows the hood, there. <laughs> Every you're talking about the split right? streak. No, I'm talking about the actual hood. You see all the streaks and of the machinery. Almost yeah. it looks like. Is it ever gonna look good once you own it, or do you just embrace this kind of reality that your car mm. is kind of more living, breathing, showcasing smudges and and then if of course I zoomed in, give me a plus on that. Zoom in a little bit on the gap there. Like, look how sharp that piece of metal is. Go up. Up. Right where the, the hood, yeah. Like, it's like wider up top and thinner near the bottom. So it kind of like tapers into more of a point. Is that intentional? It looks too lifted near the glass. M maybe it is. It, it, doesn't look in, it doesn't look integrated. No, you're right. It doesn't. Yeah, it almost feels like um, this little dot here. It's like... The sheet metal got folded in, but what about the rain, the elements? Oh, I didn't even I'm, notice I'm, the dots. I'm so, I am so curious about this thing being in the world and the forums and the Tesla fans and the investors like Mo and myself <laughs> as a buyer who, who likes trucks and uses are, trucks all the time. Are you worried? I mean, I don't know that I would use the term worried. Because ultimately, I think, like, Tesla does cool things, and it's an ambitious decision, and I applaud that regardless. Like, I, that makes life exciting for me. But it's, I guess it's just a bit unfortunate that it's impossible to deliver something closer to the concept. And unfortunately, in reality, even our, like, implementing our best ideas, we realize that the implementation is the hard part. Mm-hmm actually making it. and elon has said this on a number of occasions look making it is the hard part yeah yeah and abiding by regulation like having the you know side mirrors and not having the cool wheel caps i feel like the i actually feel like the ratios of the thing are have changed it like seems more narrow when you see it from the side like the entire shape has changed on this photo like, I don't think there was a single render that looked really like that. It, it was, it's almost like the dimension, it used to be fatter by the looks of it. But of course, it probably couldn't get into a single garage door. And, and, and you see how the tire extends to the edge of the fender flare there? See that? That's like what you see on a lot of off-road style trucks. And then you go to the other image they have and there's so much space in there i don't know i mean it's like i'm getting carried away and i'm nitpicking and i'm not the one making it. i have tremendous appreciation for anybody trying to make this thing this is one of the most ambitious projects of all time period mm -hmm. so it's not even about that it's just more getting a closer look at the challenges of doing something like this that's so different and then me wondering how people will embrace it or, sure. or not and and yeah, what the consumer reaction will be when it's in the world. Like this thing's going to get handed over to the likes of the, the motor trends and such. And, and I'll have it here in the studio and it's going to be an inspection of sorts, an inspection unlike any other because it is so ambitious and different. And inherently as a human, you're going to snoop around and sniff around a little differently when something is so new and different. You're going to smell the sheet metal. You might do something like that. Yeah. No, I hear you. 
I think that um, there's a long way to actually make it, you know, the best that it can look, which is the render. We all thought that it was going to look like this. But it wasn't even a render, Will, because they put that thing on stage. It looked like that on stage in real life. Mm -hmm. It was beyond a render. They had a prototype, and now it doesn't... It kind of... It looks like a budget... It looks like a budget version. DIY. Yeah, it looks like Dare a... Dare I say. <laughs> it looks like a DIY version of what they showed off on stage. Yeah, I mean, there's still um, a couple months, maybe another year. Maybe, maybe that's what maybe that's what it is. Might maybe, maybe, it maybe it's not there yet. Even the the steel, and I don't know if there's editing and 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 filters and stuff, but the steel, and I mean, steel is steel. But man, the way they showed it off previously. Shout out Jeffrey. Shout out Legend. Shout out Ray. Uh, Jeffrey says it's a prototype. They're not going for a super polished look. Judging it as a finished product is unfair at this point. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. But that's the way it goes with these things, isn't it? Leaks, mm -hmm. images, <clears throat> investors like Mo that are trying to gauge <laughs> well, yeah, what's going to happen with the company. Like, this is the world we're living in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible to avoid. But it, is, it isn't... I'm not condemning the thing by any means. But, like, am I crazy? That, that looks better. Is it just the wheels and the tires, or is it also the the, the metal work? It doesn't look as um, shiny or reflective. But it's indoors. Yeah. Uh, controlled lighting environment. I don't know. Looks like maybe some airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty it up a bit so it's like evened out. It, go from this back to the other photos that we were just examining. Quit laughing. <laughs> no, I'm just... It's also reflective. Maybe it's just the wheels. Maybe we need to change these wheels. There's definitely going to be after. Go back to the profile photo. Never mind this photo. This photo has a filter on it. This photo right here. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And anyway, listen. Uh, it's possible we're being too critical here, and it's possible these are just bad photos, bad angles. Maybe this is flattening the image because it's such a zoom. There's so many factors here. Hmm. If uh, we got to wait to see it in real life, and we got to wait to see what a finished product looks like, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 still one of the most ambitious. I'm still super excited for it. Like it doesn't change that. Yeah. I'm I'm just saying, as we get closer to this thing, you start to realize. Uh, so some of the realities of mass producing things. Mm -hmm. yeah, tough, tough, tough business. That's all. That's all. All right. Uh, you have another Cybertruck follow up. You want to tell me about this one? Um, there were some spy shots about the interior, actually, and we oh. never really got a good look at the interior. Maybe just renders, but um, it kind of shows off, you know, what it looks like on the inside. <clears throat> looks like a lot oh, of other tests. Oh no, uh, he's the guy. Honk. Sawyer's the guy. Yeah, it's Mo's type. Because <clears throat> um. <laughs> <laughs> of the stock and rocket. I mean, I like that center console. <laughs> Lots of storage over there. I mean, it looks like a mm -hmm. Model S, Model Three, very very similar. Again, mm -hmm. the this, adjustments on the side. This area has changed quite a bit from the original event twenty years ago where they first showed it off. But this is what I would expect it to look. Although the center section there, the carpeted center section. Oh, worst. No, don't do that. Because of the carpet. Yeah. I, I mean, that can't be final. I hope not. I hope it not. It just either. looks like a box. It looks like, um, you know when you go and get a subwoofer built? <laughs> like a black box. <laughs> that looks like a subwoofer. They line it with the fabric. Yeah, yeah. maybe that is a subwoofer. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do they have any backseat? Well, obviously, there's a lot of wires going on in the Oh, yoke. the dash is, uh, it follows the same design as the, with the truck itself, like sharp edges. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gauge cluster. And there's a, you can see the shared parts, though, like the display of and course. the, the yoke. Mm -hmm. What's the other image uh, he's trying to show? What's, what is he trying to show here? Um, the glass? The angled oh, construction. The, is it the side mirror? Maybe. I don't know. He zoomed. Oh, maybe it's that. Is that a 12-volt a uh, 
plug? I would think it would be a speaker. Oh, maybe it's a speaker. In that location. Kind of tiny, actually. I mean, maybe it's not perfectly installed. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a bit twisted? It's a prototype! Obviously, yeah. but this is... It's a prototype! This is kind of part of the fun, no? The gauge cluster can be seen on the left. Very interesting. Small window around the A pillar. Oh, okay. He's pointing at the window there. Right. That tiny so little the tiny window. Little... Yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> Everything's angled in there, too. Uh, I don't mind the aesthetic. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty I nice. Don't mind it. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> the sharp corners. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Does your plaid good. have a uh, seat adjustment on the side of the seat? I think so. Okay. Is that that seat does look different, though. It looks a little bit different. In what well, sense? I don't know. Is it... It's higher off the ground. It's definitely higher off the ground. Yeah, it's sure. higher off the ground. Shout out, Louise. And are your pedals like that? I don't think so, right? This could all change. Of course. Take it for what it's worth. That box under the display is the biggest concern at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. We're, we are still definitely in prototype stages, which goes to show you that we're not, we're, we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a while longer. So, I'm going to have to get a different truck in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. uh, Twitter is set to comply with Elon Musk's demand for data on fake accounts. Oh, wow. Network ready to provide stream of daily data after world's richest man threatened to pull out of the $44 billion purchase if Twitter refused. Obviously, this comes after... Uh, the stock price and, well, I guess the market in general took a bit of a dive. Did it? <clears throat> well, I mean, from, from his original offer? Oh, from his original offer. Sorry. Yeah, I it's, a, you meant. it's been a downward trend. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yeah. Well, it was 5420. Mm -hmm. And what are we at today? Is there, will there ever be another 5420 offer? <laughs> oh. It's well, th 30, hold on. 39. If, if the... <laughs> If he gives them the data and it turns out they're correct that there is only five percent bots, mm -hmm. he he then no longer has, I guess, any leverage to negotiate the price anymore, right? Well, you know the way he's going to scrape over that data with a fine tooth comb. He'll find something. It's a it's a home inspection. He'll find something. But I'm saying, what if he finds what they're saying? They're like, we searched, it was 5%. He does his detailed search. I hear you, but when did they do the home inspection? I'll find anything. Mm, right. And maybe that's like that, but then something else he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, I think the offer's looking pretty decent at the moment. And they're like, what do you need? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's on. <laughs> All of a sudden, you got the board and you got the big investors. They're like, uh -huh. remember that 5420? We don't want that with a walk right now. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess it could. It's a risk. And then, and then also at the same time, like you said, if the data, if there's anything favorable about the data and it becomes public information, it's good, good for Twitter. Great. Right. Great. Yeah. Um, Bobby says, forever Willy Bronco 60-40. 60-40 split. People, people, you don't understand the hope you gave people. On the 60-40. All they, yeah. That's all they wanted. They didn't want 100 no. to 0. They didn't want 90-10. They, they want weren't asking for 80-20. They weren't asking for 70-30. You gave them a 60-40. That's all they wanted. They're yeah. reasonable people. Yeah. The community is reasonable. Good for you. Social media company will provide the world's richest man with access to a stream of data comprising more than 500 million tweets posted every day. According to Washington Post, a number of companies already pay for access to the data, which includes a real-time record of tweets, the devices users tweet from, and information about the accounts that tweet post reported. Hmm. A number of companies already pay for access to this data. Hmm. Do we pay for access to that? The New York Times also reported that Twitter would let Musk view its fire hose of daily traffic in response to legal threats that the deal would be in jeopardy. Otherwise, Musk warned Twitter on Monday that he might walk away from his $44 billion deal hmm. to acquire the company if it fails to provide the data on spam and fake accounts that he seeks. Multi-billionaire has expressed doubts over Twitter's claim that fake and spam accounts represent less than 5% of his 229 million strong user base. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
They said declining to present the information was a material breach of the deal agreement, which would allow Musk to walk away without paying the $1 billion breakup fee written into the deal. Mm. Twitter shares rose in the afternoon following these reports. $1 billion. I guess they'll get to the bottom of it. Their use of the word firehose data makes me seem makes me think that they're going to just bury Elon in information. You can't bury him. He got, he got people. <laughs> right. He'll find a way out. He's got people. <laughs> He's got people. He'll be all right. But firehose is a terrifying way of thinking of social media. Right. We're going like, to firehose you all the information. But also the fact that they have one. Elon Musk's Twitter deal is backed by a secretive, little-known Dubai-based investment firm whose founder was once dubbed a human supercomputer. Send it to that guy. That's yeah, right, yeah. Send mm-hmm. it to the human supercomputer. Elon Musk's Twitter deal has received $700 million in backing from little-known Vi Capital. The Dubai-based firm was founded by Alexander Tomas, who has previously backed Musk's SpaceX, Boring, and Neuralink. I feel like you got some friends when you're Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. I feel like you pick up the phone every so often when you're Elon Musk. It's like, hey, supercomputer, help me out. You could even call Mo, look for some advice. <laughs> <Right>. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tomas's Twitter account linked in April 21st must tweet that called for Twitter to authenticate all real humans. High profile backing from big names like Sequoia Capital, Larry Ellison, but another backer, little known Dubai based investment firm, according to a Bloomberg report. Hmm. Not a lot of information on Vi Capital, no contact info. And they provided five billion in assets and committed seven hundred million to the Twitter bid. Oh, they have five billion in assets. But who are you? No contact info, no email address. You're worth a cool five billies. You send seven hundred million. What do you say about that, Mo? Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I missed out on this part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of information about uh, Alexander Tomas. Mm. What are you trying to say, Will? When you give me these headlines like this, what are you trying to get at? Well, I just want to know who's helping him out with the Twitter deal. Who's giving him this money and I know. trusting him with... Uh, I know, but who are you saying this guy's tied to? What are you trying to get at here? The mob. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Easy, Will. Uh, little is known about vice founder Alexander Tomas, who once worked with Russian-Israeli billionaire Yuri Milner and has been described by top venture capitalist Ben Horowitz and Mark Anderson as Milner's human supercomputer. He also once worked at Goldman Sachs and was a founding member of Arma Partners. Tomas previously invested in Musk other companies, SpaceX, Boring, and Neuralink. Oof, that's a real pal. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of Vi Capital's public assets have included holdings in Shopify, Activision, Blizzard, Bloomberg reports. Hmm, 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 hmm. It just seems like this guy's in the shadows. It's interesting. See, a, a, a human supercomputer in the shadows. Uh-huh. Is he the one calling the shots? That's Is right. he the one telling Elon to buy Twitter? That's right. Yeah. He's the puppet master. Mm-hmm. Next, Elon, you will do the Twitter deal. He doesn't speak that way. First, we do SpaceX, followed by Neuralink. Uh, lastly, who's that? We purchase Twitter. Are you dying, sir? No. I am fine. All right. (laughs) Carry on. (laughs) Shout out, Ellie. Or Eli. U.S. authorities have expanded the investigation into Tesla's autopilot system after a dozen collisions at crash scenes involving first responder vehicles. The latest sign that regulators are stepping up scrutiny of the automated driving features. The probe, initially announced by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in August, was widened to cover an estimated 830,000 Tesla Model Y, X, S, and 3 vehicles from the 2014 model year onward. The regulator, which has power to deem cars defective and order recalls, said the vehicles now under investigation have been involved in 14 crashes that resulted in 15 injuries and one fatality. The probe was also converted from a preliminary investigation to an engineering analysis, according to documents posed 
Thursday on NHTSA's website. The agency says the move will allow it to extend the existing crash analysis and take other steps to determine the extent to which Tesla's technology may exacerbate human factors or behavioral, behavioral safety risks by undermining the effectiveness of the driver's supervision. Hmm. Um, I was listening once to a podcast about a car that had an issue catching fire and I was, it was a very interesting and inside look into how the NHTSA would look at a car post collision involving injuries or worst case scenario fatalities. And they would say, Hey, is there anything about this car that... Right. Is deficient that where if this person were in another car where things may have gone differently the the with traditional vehicles it would be around design where is the fuel tank um is there enough of a, a crush zone to limit the impact and airbags and things like this in tesla's case you can see the 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 suggestion here is that possibly when people are fully entrusting an automated system and just having their hand resting there, that maybe they are not in their uh, best, in the best position to respond quickly to something going awry. Now, the difficult part about this analysis would be, well, are people even that good at that anyways? And are automated systems already responsible for saving all kinds of people from all kinds of collisions? Mm. Okay, that's possible too. But this investigation, I mean, these types of investigations, this is going to be an ongoing thing. Part of the probe launched in February into the so-called phantom braking phenomenon. No crashes or injuries stemming from the braking issue have been reported. It's going to be ongoing, man. As Tesla becomes such a ubiquitous technology in the world, uh, but also it's going the, to just be a much bigger sample size. Also, the term um, autopilot and um, self-driving, I think that is uh, might be a dangerous term. Yeah, we talked now. about. Yeah, it's like overpromising. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it definitely gets people's attention. No, for, I mean yes, but. Actually, the systems are not, the way it's, imp I don't have full self-driving beta, but the way it's implemented now, at least the last time I drive, is really not all that different than the lane keeping slash adaptive cruise control slash whatever every automaker wants to call it. It's not super far beyond that. Yes, it can switch lanes. It does turn on its own, but it's constantly prompting you to touch the steering wheel and... It's really just in that in that way, it's not all that different. The capabilities are beyond that, obviously, mm -hmm. but they have to be unlocked for most of us. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in these cases, they weren't unlocked for this particular analysis. So those people would be using it in a similar fashion. Now, one of the concerning things at one point in time was people figuring out ways to defeat the human recognition systems like is there a person there and i remember the, the vehicle was ask, asking me to opt into um driver camera tracking like looking at me like right. are my eyes open mm -hmm. things like this because i remember defeat devices used to exist that people were using to hang yeah. off the steering wheel so that the weight was there and then they could you see look you remember the yeah, clips yeah. people fully falling asleep I remember. seems a bit much mm-hmm Remember the viral guy? He was always in the back seat multiple times. He got the car right. taken away, and he's in the back seat again. Yeah. And he goes, "I don't care. I'm a." He keeps doing that. <laughs> what was he? He was saying he's like a a millionaire, and it doesn't matter. He'll just buy another one. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. It was it weird? Yeah. Oh, uh, we have an update in the chat on the Arby's Wagyu burger. It's cool. an average burger. Mouth chew is a slight step up from fast food, though. Eight out of ten would <laughs> order again. Shout out, William. Okay. Mouth, mouth chew. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be as 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 Tesla continues to uh, um, fill Need cars. Yeah, as as it continues to fill the market, as it continues to increase in the number of vehicles on the road at any given moment, so will the scrutiny. No surprise. 
You know what's crazy though? They can actually turn it off if they need to, as based on software, right? Yeah, like they got rid of rolling stop, and mm -hmm. sure they could, but that a lot of people paid for it, and then what? Then you could have know, lawsuits, yeah. and it's a whole other thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing to it, man. Yeah. Uh, Xbox's continued cloud climb. Samsung TVs, more nations, games outside of Game Pass, plus Microsoft confirms a new initiative to offer more free game demos on Xboxes. So I'm playing Xbox right on the TV with no console, Will? Yes, that's correct. That's all right. That's pretty cool. Ahead of its annual summer new games presentation, I think it's on Sunday, Microsoft's team at Xbox pre-brief members of the press with announcements that don't e revolve around gameplay-filled reveal trailers we thus picked through a 45-minute presentation. Thank you very much, Ars Technica. After installing the Xbox app, a compatible Samsung TV will enable Bluetooth device pairing and present step-by-step -step instructions for wirelessly connecting an official Xbox wireless controller, a Bluetooth-compatible PlayStation controller, both DualShock 4 and DualSense, Amazon's Luna controller, and other generic Bluetooth controllers with at least one controller paired. Users will then gain access to the same streamed games interface used by Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers, which is currently available on Chrome and Edge web browsers and all Xbox consoles from the base Xbox One generation upwards. So no need for external hardware. Obviously, you're just doing Game Pass, so you're streaming. So there's, be there's well, there's benefits, but there's also drawbacks to that. You've got to have a nice connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how the latency is going with that at the moment. I haven't goofed around with it in a while. The service's international reach also expands starting today. Microsoft confirmed Xbox Cloud Gaming servers activated in Argentina and New Zealand, bringing the service's supported country count to 28. I mean, it does feel like the future of gaming. It does, doesn't it? It's just right there. It's 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 stream streaming based, just like it is for video. All the video that at one time we Don't would have to download, install, you know. Eventually. And it's subscription. Eventually. So you just play it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's it's easy to understand why that would be ideal. It's, it's just uh, a lag. It's yeah. It's still a, some technical uh, limitations there for a lot of people. But you got to start somewhere, and uh, this is a pretty cool way. It's from right in your TV. Let's go for it. Just pair your controller. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You want to take a break? Oh, now we take a break. We'll be right back. Today's sponsor, Manscaped, the best in men's grooming. They got all kinds of products so that you can uh, step up your man game. You can increase your manhood. Oh. These are my words. It's not in the official script over here. In enhance your man. Starts to sound like some other type of ad here. Well, oh. take it easy over there. No, instead, what you're going to do here is you're going to get the Performance Package 4.0, which includes the world-famous Lawnmower 4.0, which is a skin-safe electric trimmer has a really cool recharge base. It, it looks like a stealth bomber, which is what you would want in your electric trimmer. It should look like that. And it has these ceramic blades. That's the skin safe element. So it's not gonna chew up your skin. You do not want your skin chewed in most circumstances. And those blades are also replaceable. It happens to be waterproof. You can use it in the shower. It's got an LED light. Like they put the tech, they put the tech in the lawnmower. But in a performance package 4.0, you get a bunch of other things too, including the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, anti-chafing ball deodorant, ball spray toner, disposable shaving mats. You can shave anywhere on your body, Will. Anywhere. You understand that? Mm. It's completely up to you. It's Manscaped. Check it out. Manscaped is designed with fathers in mind and the performance package 4.0 is here just in time for your pop special day. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code LULATER at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code LULATER. Shake what your mama gave you. Nah, shake what your daddy gave you. Check out Manscaped. Also sponsored by HelloFresh, it is time to save yourself from stress. Did you know stress kills? Well, did That's you know it. that? Yeah, get rid of Oh. You take that stress, you kick it square in the butt, and you get yourself HelloFresh, and you get yourself a nice meal, because then you don't feel stressed anymore. Mm. You get that nice, relaxing feeling after you eat something like Turkish spiced beef or traditional spaghetti bolognese. It could be chicken ranch wraps. It's completely up to you. 
But look at these meals. You can't even show Mo these meals right now because the man's hungry and I know it. But the beauty of this is you're getting it ready in uh, 30 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, it'll tell you actually what you're in for when you go ahead and add it to your order. It shows up at your front door. Anybody can do it. Anybody can nail it. I promise you that because I've nailed it myself. The level of complexity is up to you. The amount of time you have on your hands, obviously the ingredients and the different uh, dishes and everything comes ready to go. You cannot screw it up. You can do it. You can make it. And you can feel better about it in the long run. That's HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week. So you can savor summer flavors right from home. Last week, I wanted to try something a little bit hardier. So I went with the quick Irish style stew. Chop up the ingredients and everything ends up in one pot. Super simple, very easy to clean up. And now they have 30 new dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That's the most choices of any meal kit. Go to hollowfresh.com slash lulater16 and use the code lulater16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's hollowfresh.com slash lulater16 and use the code lulater16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you to HelloFresh. Ooh, look at, look at that. Uh, how about that for staying competitive, changing media landscape? Netflix rumored to acquire Roku. Mm -hmm. You heard about this. Yeah, this is very interesting. Is that right? Is that real? I don't know if it's real. Yeah, look at this uh, Look at this URL that Will's on. Yeah. Watch I-I-N-N-Z -I -N -N dot C-O <laughs> dot N-Z. Will gets carried away sometimes. Talk is heating up about an acquisition by okay, Netflix. Okay, so it is real. Come yeah, on. but you could at least put Business Insider <laughs> or something up so we don't have to... Uh, yeah, I should. Uh, feel so weird about it and, and wonder. I mean, no offense. No offense to anybody. Right. Because it's well, just... Well, they're it's, offended. Well, it's possible we just don't know, right? Like, Is that not a possibility? How can we know everything and every website? Mm -hmm. I can't know them all. So many out there. Shout out, Brevin. Uh, Netflix uh, rumored to acquire Roku. Look at the size of that text down there. Lovely. Roku has sense. a growing advertising business, something Netflix is looking to get into. Mm -hmm. Roku started as a product inside Netflix. I didn't know that. It was spun out more than a decade ago. I didn't know that. Shout I didn't out, know any of this. Shout out, William. A deal makes sense. Some insiders say others question Netflix's desire for a hardware company. Uh, hmm. Employees at Roku have been discussing the possibility of a Netflix acquisition in recent weeks, according to people familiar with the matter. The chatter comes as Roku's stock has dropped 80% since late July. Hmm. 80% on weaker demand for video streaming and lower set-top box sales. Well, imagine all of the smart TVs have all the Roku features in there, including possibly even a Roku app. Uh, the business model is a little bit... Yeah. So-so. From that standpoint, and I don't know that they want to get in a get into the big business of creating content exclusive to their mm. platform. Neither do I. That's a nutty business to get into. Even Netflix has difficulty with that, dealing with Disney and the others. Mm -hmm. Roku competes with Apple, Amazon, Google, and Samsung in a market for streaming devices, and some of those industry titans are battling with the smaller companies. For lucrative video ad dollars, the collapse in Roku's stock made it hard to compete with its larger tech rivals on pay in a tight labor market. The result has been a staggering increase in equity grants to employees, leaving Roku well underwater on stock-based compensation. <gasps> Ran out of liquid, gave equity to the employees. Yikes. Roku has been seen as an acquisition target before, including last year when, according to the Wall Street Journal, Comcast CEO Brian Roberts considered purchasing the company. In recent weeks, the possibility of a Netflix acquisition has become the focus of internal chatter at Roku. That's when Roku abruptly closed the trading window for all employees, prohibiting them from selling any of their vested stock at a time when they should normally be able to do so, according to two of the people familiar with the matter. Netflix wants ads, and Roku has them. So I guess Roku has worked out some different ad deals. There's your guy, Reed Hastings. Maybe some of those deals could be worthwhile. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, some ad tech in there. And Netflix has been thinking about a lower tier 
subscription right. that would be ad supported or to just diversify it like they can keep netflix the way it is and they have this other company roku that's ad driven right so they wouldn't necessarily you don't think it would to... fold into one another <clears throat> no it might i'm a little suspect about this though because it all seems like just roku saying this like netflix hasn't said anything no but that's just a rumor at this point right netflix wouldn't say anything about this hmm. really they wouldn't say we're interested or i don't think not publicly no okay netflix is looking to introduce advertising to its service for the first time as it faces increased competition and subscriber losses roku has built a robust video advertising platform that generated 647 million in first quarter revenue wow that's seven times the sales brought in by roku's hardware business advertising is a bigger part of roku's business at the moment by a lot which is interesting so what are they how are they doing this are they licensing content and selling ads when i watch it are they doing a hulu on me i think it might be a i hulu. haven't goofed with roku in a long long time no neither have i <clears throat> huh. but either way this could be a fast track into figuring out something about the advertising business 650 million dollars ain't nothing in, no. a, in a quarter from from ads yeah and um, maybe um hardware something to do with hardware a streaming device for netflix well they were just saying that the hardware business is uh trash seven oh, yeah. seven times less than the ad business hmm. because I, I, the smart tv thing doesn't leave a lot of room for the box anymore no it doesn't right. so even apple put out the apple tv app which unless they can like you can get the apple tv app on lg and samsung mm -hmm. tvs mm -hmm. So even if you wanted all those subscription services or you had a big inventory of content that you already purchased from Apple, yeah. you don't even need the hardware from them. Mm. No. And I don't know what they're going to do to make futuristic, compelling hardware, but Apple, imagine a company like Apple, there were rumors forever they were going to do a TV and then they were like, no, 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 no. Right. It's all because it's all there. Yeah. So they wanted to go more services. Mm -hmm. They haven't done advertising. <laughs> And maybe no. maybe Netflix is saying, okay, maybe we fit between. Maybe we fit in between something like Apple and YouTube. Maybe we're right there in the middle. Hmm. And we have both premium content and uh, ad, ad version. Right, yeah. It kind of reminds me of Amazon Prime. Oh, in what sense? Um, they have ads as well. Oh, within right, Within yeah. their premium uh -huh. service. Yeah, Amazon's got it. Yeah, Amazon and us. Hulu. H yeah, Hulu and has Hulu multiple well. tiers. And I guess you could even say that YouTube has multiple tiers because you can pay to turn off advertising. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's a different way of looking at it. Yeah. But imagine everybody gets Netflix with advertising or you can pay more and get rid of advertising. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the way you want to look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking at it in reverse since Netflix has always been paid without advertising, but... Yeah. I think this would be because Netflix is all like uh, their whole thing is they don't want ads on their platform, right? Uh, that was the appealing thing of Netflix in the beginning. Mm -hmm. so well, this Netflix would be a clever way to diversify their uh, income, like have ad-driven business coming through Roku, but Roku, but as its own entity. Do you think that could happen? Yeah, I mean that's what you suggested previously. It's it's possible. Uh, but the rumor has been around Netflix itself introducing ads. Yeah, I just because find that of, hard to believe. Well, because of loss of subscribers. Yeah. People are saying it's too expensive. What they've been doing is charging more money mm -hmm. and laying people off or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Well, can you just keep charging more money? No. No. There's so a certain number. You, yeah, and particularly now that it's gone so global mm -hmm. and you have different economics in different places right different markets if you want to be global having an ad subsidized product opens you up to so bring so many customers in that may may at some point become a paying customer right look at the foot in the door look at the freemium uh video game model that just like demolished everything mm -hmm. you play the game for free yeah do you no you oh buy do you outfits and do you yeah. <clears throat> shout out mike yeah. So I, I think you're going to see ads inside of Netflix at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't really see another way. Netflix started out as the movie store, but online, right? So there yeah. was never any reason. I mean, I, I've been a part of Netflix since they've been shipping DVDs to your house. Mm -hmm. 
imagine that. Uh, and then they just moved that online, and now it's a whole new media landscape right. where it seems there's endless and unlimited content to consume. It's a different market that they exist in. Shout out Emmanuel. They still have Stranger Things. Yeah. Apparently the fourth season's really good, according to Mo. Yeah, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Shout out Emmanuel and shout out Puerto Rico. <laughs> Last of Us remake officially revealed, arriving in September PS5, PC version on the way. Officially announced at Summer Game Fest after leaking. Uh, Will is a big Last of Us. He yeah, big fan. He keeps he, naughty er, dog. Shout every out. time he's like, well, he's like, well, Lou, at least play that game. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I can't be playing these games. Yeah. However, you it is very R rated. Say again, Mo. I said you've been getting pretty good. You've been putting in the work. Yeah, but I did this. I can't. I never have a chance to play a game like that. Not like this. This is very story based, right? It is. Yeah. I mean, it's. By the creators of Uncharted? Yeah, okay. I, just, I, I used to love Uncharted, man. This is R-rated. I was a big Uncharted Can't guy. Can't play with your kids. Well, it doesn't matter. The fact is, just sitting down for a story game, I know this is, I sound like I'm complaining. Maybe I am. Maybe I wish that I, that that, that could happen every so often. But, like, you're going to put, what, 15 hours to this game? Sure. Something like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you really want to be immersed in it, immersed in the world. So you don't want too much space between... Like, I find if you put it down for a week, you're not coming back in my life. Yeah. Without, with a good story, you got to play it throughout. You got to play it through. It's like kind of like a movie almost. Uh Uh, Imagine trying to watch a movie in pieces over the course of a week. Uh It's just like, mm -hmm. no thanks. But I guess they do it with series and so forth. Either way, point being is it's uh, I wish I had an opportunity. It, at a certain point in my life, Will, I'll come back to the story-based video games. And I'll, I'll, I'll take a crack. I'll go back and do all The Last of Us. The long-rumored remake of The Last of Us has been leaked. It's officially referred to as Last of Us Part 1. Does that make it a prequel? The game features new enemy AI based on The Last of Us Part 2, 60 FPS performance, and new combat options. Hmm. Wasn't it a huge fiasco with the last game? The last Last of Us? Yeah. It was like some sort of developers and it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But the games are good. Every time it's a big game, it's a whole thing. Somebody's being harassed. Uh, somebody's overworking. Yeah. It's so hard to make these big games, apparently. You yes. know? Shout out Salty Badger and shout out the dev life. The listing calls the remake a total overhaul of the original experience, faithfully reproduced but incorporating modernized gameplay, improved controls, and expanded accessibility options. Plus, feel immersed with improved effects and enhanced exploration and combat. So you'll be playing this, Will. Oh, yeah. You'll be playing that. You'll be marching around. What is it? Zombies? Um, infected. Yeah, it'll be infected. You'll be killing sure. the infected, won't you? Yeah. That's what you need to do on, it's a, exciting. on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll definitely Mo play can it. play it. Mo has no excuse. No, I just don't like playing <laughs> video games. Tell me watch a movie. I'll watch a movie. No, that's not an excuse. It is kind of like What do you movie? mean? I have no interest. It's not an excuse. <laughs> I'll play it and then you <laughs> watch it. Is my interest Mo? not enough? In that's right. <laughs> All right. TikTok can now help stop your infinite scrolling. A new screen time dashboard will summarize your usage. (laughs) Does anybody actually want that? (laughs) Please (laughs) uh, don't tell me what just happened. You're 14 hours into this. TikTok is adding a series of new features that are designed to stop you from disappearing inside its infinite feed of addictive short form videos. The service has announced a new tool will show a reminder after using the app for a prolonged user-defined period of time, adding a new safeguard to existing daily limits, teenage users between the ages of 13 and 17 will be prompted to use the screen time limiting tool if they spend over 100 minutes in the app in a single day. What do you guys think? 100 minutes? Is that the healthy amount of TikTok per day? Oof. Well, I guess they obviously can't put it too low. 100 minutes. Somebody, a mic in the chat says, shout out to Feisty Mo because you got angry there. When? Moments ago. <laughs> oh, where I was like, I have no Let interest. me have my own interest for once. <laughs> right. And the screaming and all that. <laughs> yeah. So, have you calmed down? Mm-hmm. Good. Got chilled out. Thank goodness. That was terrifying. 
how how much time should it be? 13 to 17 years old, 100 minutes per day? Is that what we're doing? I guess so. Hey, man, better than more. 100 minutes is the sufficient amount. Do you guys watch TikTok? Is that going on? Not anymore. No. But I still uh, go on uh, Instagram Reels a lot, so. Which is basically TikTok? Is TikTok watermarks yeah. everywhere? Yeah. No, actually. No, no more watermarks because their 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 uh, AI can pick out the watermarks. And I actually it only, haven't seen one because it's only promoting. They they straight up said it. Yeah, we're gonna bury it if you have that watermark. You know what? Kind of good for them to be honest. I think that's a good move. Good for who? For Instagram. You sound like an investor. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, that's right. That's Will. He's that's big. The, big he's Zuckerberg. A meta, yeah. He's a huge Zuckerberg. They play Last of Us together. Oh, didn't they change their name today? Or yesterday or something? You're talking about Ticker? Is this Ticker Talk? Yeah. I, I heard about it. Yeah, they the... somehow magically were able to get Meta, which at first was uh, taken. Now they are Meta. Yeah, now they're Meta. Meta. Whoa, look at this stuff. <laughs> meta. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Come on. I mean, no. Go, Will, hit six months. You'll Mo, look at listen. That's a cliff. Don't forget the strategy. Uh, yes. It, it, you buy high, you sell low. Sell low. <laughs> so so buy at that over there. So this is your February. time to buy. <laughs> you buy on the left, you sell on the right. <laughs> so you're fine. You're in great shape get, uh, for your investment strategy that you pioneered. Uh -huh. You're in great shape. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, daily limits. I guess it's good. It's better than nothing like you said, but 13 to 17, 100 minutes a day. It's, it's, it's really weird, the idea of the app the app that's trying to addict you is, you know, it's like cigarettes and, and a Nicorette. N yes. They're like, they're, they're like, try the cigarettes. And when you're done, try the gum. All right. <laughs> 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 like, build a healthy relationship with this addictive uh -huh. app. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's buying. like, wait a second. Wait a second. Are you really my friend? Because mm -hmm. I can't tell. TikTok's new features allow the addition of similar tools to other apps like Instagram and Netflix that are, uh, follow the addition, right? Instagram did this. Netflix did this. Apple will, will show you your screen time if you have the balls to look at it. <coughs> All right. Well, that's cool. AI trained on 4chan becomes hate speech machine. That sounds like such a motherboard uh, headline. After 24 hours, the nine bots running on 4chan had posted 15,000 times. Just pure hate speech. Hate bot. Yeah. Uh, an AI researcher and YouTuber, Yannick Kilcher, trained in AI using 3.3 million threads from 4chan's infamously toxic, politically incorrect. He then unleashed the bot back onto 4chan with predictable results. The AI was just as vile as the post it was trained on spouting racial slurs and engaging with anti-Semitic threads. After Kilcher posted his video and a copy of the program to Hugging Face, GitHub for AI, ethicists and researchers in the AI field expressed concern. Well, I can, I mean, yeah. Is anybody surprised by this? Probably not. Uh, he activated nine instances of the bot, allowed them to post for 24 hours. In that time, the bots posted 15,000 times. This was more than 10% of all posts made on the politically incorrect board that day. Woof! Woof, woof! Woof, woof, woof! A couple of bots post 10% of all the content, train the people. What are the people saying? I don't know. I'm reading the bots. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know dude. what people are thinking. The training. I feel like they're going to just be bots all over, just yelling amongst each other and then we as humans just consume it the bot the bot arguments yes Whoa. bot robots arguing with robots robots fighting robots we're because like because we like drama mm -hmm. you get them mm -hmm. and then everybody's just lurking watching the bots bot yes uh, AI researchers viewed Kilcher's video as more than just a YouTube prank. For them, it was an unethical experiment using AI. This experiment would never pass a human research e ethics board. L uh, Lauren Oaken Rayner, the director of medical imaging research at the Royal Adelaide Hospital and a senior research fellow at the Australian Institute of Machine Learning, said in a Twitter thread. Well, yeah, because it looks like it's people having that conversation, but uh, it's kind of like Elon's request. He's like, who's a bot? What's a bot? How many bots? Mm -hmm. This guy's like all the bots. I got him. Over there in 4chan. I got all the bots. Whatever you need, Elon. 
uh, 10% of all the posts in that thread uh, or in that uh, 4chan call it a thread. What do they call it? Forum. They call it a forum. They're not, it's not Message like Reddit. Board. It's not a sub. Message board. I know, but it's a slash. What do they call it? Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, board. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A board. Uh, he pushed back on Twitter on the idea that this bot would ever do harm or had done harm done harm all i hear is vague grandstanding statements about harm but absolutely zero instances of actual harm he said it's like a magic word these people say but then nothing more listen man sometimes people behave like bots too just regurgitating just the uh, parroting just the uh, replicating you say what? I say that too. I'm with you. Mm. We are team. We say things. Uh, it's best to be careful on the internet and use it for no more than 100 minutes at a time. <laughs> uh -huh. New Mark Cuban company slashes high drug prices. I this, thought this was cool. This is life. Oh, go ahead, Mo. <clears throat> No, I thought this was a cool Since story. You jumped all over it there. I'm going to back off. I'll push my microphone out of the way. Go ahead, Mo. Um, well, we should read the article because <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> I just read the title and I skimmed through it. <laughs> and I thought it was cool enough to talk about. But from what I got, essentially, Mark Cuban um, opened a company where uh, he is selling like uh, life-saving drugs. Apparently, there's like 15 life-saving drugs on there. Mm -hmm. for a 15% markup, which is uh, like industry, it's not a standard in the industry. Like a minimum is 100% markup. Uh. They showed examples in here of like what other people or what other um, uh, companies charge and what he charges. Um, the only small thing I would mention is that I read somewhere that um, you can't pay for it with insurance because if you did, then he'd have to agree to mark it up. Exactly. Because wow. the uh, insurance companies have like uh, standards of what things should cost. Oh. So I don't know. I thought this was amazing. You can get like uh, life saving drugs for a reasonable price. How many shares do you own in this company? This is, I don't think this is a public company. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Here's an example. He says, Our cost for Al Albendazole is 2608 per course. We mark that price up by 15% so we can continue to run the company and invest in disrupting the pricing of as many drugs as we possibly can. He explained that makes the base price of the drug $30. Then we add on the actual cost, $3, that our pharmacy partners charge us to prepare and provide the prescription to you. That makes the sales price on this website $33, far, far lower than the pricing available in the marketplace. Uh, I actually use this pharmacy and it's the only reason I'm able to still get my medications. It's legit. This is uh, some commenters. I think this is uh, one of those things where there's a lot of people who would applaud such a behavior. You can get a lot of fans turning down the uh, turning down the price on this stuff, especially the type of medication that people need to live. Yeah. He's not like, he's the opposite of Martin Screlly, right? Remember that guy? You're yeah. talking about the anti Screlly? Yeah. All he needs now is that Wu Tang record. It'll be all set. He should, yeah. <laughs> Explaining the business model, Cuban cited the drug prescribed for hookworm. Oh, that's the one he's saying $26 per course. It can cost otherwise as much as $500 per course. So, like, my God, that is not a, a tiny jump down. That's a massive leap down. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Omar. Shout out, Samir. He's waiting for the Lou Later merch that says buy, hi buy high, sell low. <laughs> The buy high, sell low t shirt. Right. That's a great yeah. shirt. <laughs> Which, uh, of course, we pioneered. Mm -hmm. uh, there's over a million sold. <laughs> right. uh, they're just not, uh, it's only for the exclusive uh, high tier Lou Later community members. What do they have to do? Known as the High Council. Oh, known as the High Council. <laughs> yeah. There's a million of them, though, because no, they just own, each one of them owns a couple thousand of those mm -hmm. shirts. Mm, buy high, sell low. Yeah. The Mo program. 
investment advice. This is not investment advice. Texas City asked public for help identifying strange figure outside Amarillo Zoo. The human or animal or alien is difficult to identify. Now, Mo will look up at the screen and he will forget about his laptop for a moment. Yeah. What are we what looking is at? That? What is that? It's Sonic oh the Hedgehog. God. First of all, it looks like a human. Like like somebody standing. Go ahead, Mo. But at the same time... Looks I, like it's wearing a fox outfit or something. Yeah. Yeah. It does look like he's like a little bit of a... Um, so we're like going with human in outfit? <laughs> this is the guy who's waking me up every night. <laughs> yeah. That's him. <laughs> he's a werewolf. The it's city of Amarillo, it. Texas has asked the public for help identifying a weird animal-like figure that was seen on security cameras outside the Amarillo Zoo last month. The official city of Amarillo Facebook page has turned up lots of guesses, but no one knows for sure what the seemingly bipedal cryptid could be. Hmm. Is it, there a video? Of course, I'm it was 1.25 a.m. as well. Of that's, course. That's when that would happen. Mm hmm. hmm. Uh, it's it's got to be human in costume. That's what I was thinking, but uh, I think if there was a video that we could see. Wait a second. Tell. A guy giving a piggyback ride? Go back up. Someone said a guy giving a piggyback ride. Yeah, no, no, go up to the picture. Let's see if that's, is that a possibility? It mm. could be. Yes, it is. That's right. It could be a guy giving a piggyback ride. It somehow looks like a fox looking at us, but yeah, I'm just sure. Yeah, based on the silhouette. <laughs> but I'm sure they're, it's looking the other way. It's just like this weird trick and the chain link fence. But, hmm. The fact that it's a zoo as well, where it was captured. There seems to be a is well, high security there with the barbed wire. Well, yeah, on the other side of the fence. I presume that this individual is on the public side of the fence. And yeah. this is the zoo. The camera's inside the zoo. Oh. So it's looking out. And I don't know, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's a piggyback. I don't know. Why, are you, doing Why are you doing a piggyback ride 125 a.m.? What are you up to? I want to know what you're up to. It's weird. It's definitely weird. But, you know, you could easily just put on a weird costume, walk past cameras, and cause all kinds of problems on gizmodo.com. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it's what really I do not on that hard to do. <laughs> Maybe it's the Armadillo Zoo. Well, people Armadillo are... Zoo. Oh, you, you think this is an inside job? Yeah. <laughs> wow. They're just trying to get their name out there. They're, they're like, we have a new species sighted. <laughs> Shout out notice. It could also be a furry. Do you know what those are? Mm -hmm. What is it, Mo? People who like to dress up as uh, that, that, that thing. thing. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, now you're being funny about it. No, I'm not. Okay. No, someone yeah, said in the people. chat, what is it? <laughs> people who like to dress up as uh, furry animals or characters. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're okay. Why? Why do you do that? Mo? I don't know. They enjoy it. It's their interest. <laughs> you know how I feel about my interest. Are you sure about this? Uh huh. How do you know so much? The internet. It's a wonderful place. Hey, get out of here, Will. <laughs> get out of here. This, this is a. Uh, this is another article. Get out of here, dude. Robotic finger covered in living human skin. The skin can realistically bend, <laughs> stretch, and wrinkle as the finger uh, curls and extends. They gotta make it so... That's disgusting, Will. Far as I'm concerned. You, you're... Phallic. This is disgusting. You've disgusted me. Oh. oh, it's actually flicking that little dot. Yes. What is that? Dipping dots? It is, yes. Wonder how long it takes to melt. Yeah, it's definitely gross. What are they doing with it? I, I presume trying to um, engineer artificial limbs or skin. Roboticists from the University of Tokyo have taken a tiny step toward creating the Terminator. Built an articulated robot finger, seamlessly covered in living human skin. Many reasons why our current attempts to build humanoid, humanoid robots with lifelike appearances always seem to end up somewhere in the uncanny valley. Well, you need real skin, obviously. Mm-hmm. And the way that it moves. So you're going to get skin on your robots now, Mo. Never mind your furry thing you have going on. <laughs> right, okay. 
<laughs> you, you can have me. skin on your robots and just ditch the uh, your costumes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So what else can you tell me about this, Will? Um Yeah. Rubber and silicone don't move, bend, wrinkle, or even respond to the light the same way a human skin does. Mm. So I guess that's why they want to use it. Because it just simulates like a better movement with uh a better skin. A robotic <clears throat> armature, I guess. Yeah, so you're talking about putting skin on the robots. Um, live skin, that's creepy. Is that what you want to do? Um, no, it's not my cup of tea. Right. Um, but I'm guessing for them, they would like to have it as a challenge to maybe have like a real cyborg one day. <laughs> you're talking about the University of Tokyo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, that's complicated stuff. Look at this. But researchers, just don't take it from real humans, you know? No, they're not taking it from <laughs> Don't worry about that. The researchers took an entirely different approach, a relatively simple robotic finger with three moving joints, submerged in a solution made up of collagen, structural protein, dermal fibroblasts, the primary type of human cells found in skin's connective tissue, and its subsurface dermis layer the solution shrank and tightly conformed itself to the robotic finger, creating a flexible foundation on which to apply multiple layers of epidermal keratinocytes. Keratinocytes. The primary That's type the... of human cells found in skin's outer epidermis layer. Keratin. That's, what, nails? Whoa. Yeah, uh, yeah, human stuff. It's a gummy bear. That's right. Don't, <laughs> don't eat it. I think it's too special to be eaten. Uh-huh. Last one. Watch a dandelion live its life. You mean live its entire life. Uh-huh. Which is short enough to shoot a time lapse of. Ooh. Lovely. It always, you know... Wait, does it close back up? Yes. As it dies, yeah. Well, oh. it doesn't die. Oh. Well, it does eventually, but... Yes. Right now, it's kind of cocooning. It's not, in in, it's not immortal. Okay, I didn't know this. Kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of folds into itself, and, and then, then it blows up again into a dandelion. Oh, it blooms again. That's yeah, cool. Hmm. Who would have thunk? And then spits oh. out all the seeds or whatever it is. Yes. Wow, that popped off fast. It's funny about dandelions. What's so funny about it? <laughs> <laughs> you just how. They're so universally hated, but when yes. you when you look at them in isolation outside the spectrum mm -hmm. of lawns and weeds and so yeah. forth, it's it's really not that bad looking. Yes, but a herd of oh, them is oh, an eyesore. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we hit a soft spot here. No, I just a herd of them is like a whole yard of them. It's just like, what are you doing? Well, yes, because we've all determined that we don't want that and we'll destroy your lawn because you want the lawn. Mm -hmm. You're well, like, I want the lawn more right <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the hell uh, and then you have a thing with your lawn mower and yeah. what are we even doing yeah. right now but i'm just i just need a new lawn mower but what i'm saying is like if i go on a walk and there's just like an entire know, field of dandelions i know but why why is the lawn superior to the lion <laughs> Did you say lion? Yes, the dandelion. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Yeah, because one alone is no problem. In fact, it's quite beautiful, but <clears throat> just a whole field of them. Well, what about a field of flowers? Um, yeah, that's nice. Tulips. Yeah, definitely nice. Who makes these rules? Mm. Who? We do. Who's we? Humans. We're just like that doesn't look good. Let's not do that. Really, Instead, I wasn't a part. I wasn't a part of that meeting. You didn't vote. I wasn't wow. a part of that meeting. I must. I must have missed that meeting. I was busy uh, debating C eleven Bill C eleven. <laughs> right. Don't get us started on that. In Canada. Um, uh, I, go ahead, Will. What's up? <laughs> just to go back to this. Yes. Um, 
I don't remember who said it, but apparently the dandelion is a really like specific um, weed. Yeah, it's invasive. Um, because it starts off as like a sun because it's yellow and then it moves into the phase of when it turns into like a white ball like that that represents the moon and then when it flies away that represents the stars what is this poetry? i don't know what are you doing right <laughs> now? no i kind of like it but i don't know it's like ancient times or something it's oh, supposed to represent like i see the sky but if it's so invasive and no one destroyed it ever, would it would lawns exist or would they all just be dandelions and then dirt? Where would the green pastures be? Like grass would exist somewhere. Oh, right. Like if we just let them go rampage, these dandelions. It's weird mm -hmm. that there's... Where do they stop or do they stop? Are they just, just superior and more robust than grass? Would we have a lot less grass, I, I assume? But you would still have the grasslands. Yeah, the plains. Yeah, I guess they don't do as well there. Hmm. I'm not sure. Or, may, they, or maybe maybe the pesticides we're putting on them are making them more robust. <laughs> right. So they're defeating even more grass every single time they come around. They you know stronger. what? That might be it. Well, I mean, we're just goofing and gaffing. Do you like them personally? Or just joking? Yeah. No, We're I just no, having a time. No, no. I just listen. You like them? No, 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 no. I just talk to Mo. Sometimes I look <laughs> yeah, at him and yeah. I talk to him. And then, and earlier today he got angry, so he pushed his buttons. He, I mean, <laughs> it, it's been. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to you get angry. I want to pose different uh, scenarios. See where he's at. Mm -hmm. See how he lives. See how he sees the world. Yeah. I'm interested. And uh, sometimes he's down for it. Other times he's very angry. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. But I'm glad we got here and I'm glad we did it. And I'm, I'm glad that everybody showed up. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Thank you to everybody that gave us a super chat. Thank you to everybody in the Discord. I, was, I woke up in the morning. I was just scrolling through there. I'm like, damn. Y'all are wild in there. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said a thing or two. Look, there's me. I'm a T-Rex from Jurassic World. That's See, you. You, you just happen to click on it, and then that's what there it was know. right there. So oh, shout out to everybody time. everywhere in the Lou Later community, the Lou Later universe, otherwise known as the Laterverse. We got the merch coming soon. Mm -hmm. Never forget, buy high, sell low. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.